Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Pedro. I work in Accenture uh, in Recife. Uh, today, I'm going to present you this, this case. Uh, it's a work in progress as well. Uh, document reader using deep learn uh, with a small data set. This is going to be our outline today. Introduction, a brief background, and some of architecture, small data, the problem of small data, and the deployment. Well, the, the goal of this project is to automate the, the process of getting information from documents. So the user uh, has no need to input uh, the information. You extract it uh, directly from the document. And we, we developed a solution to, to, to achieve this. It's a really brief uh, background, as you may know these concepts. Um, artificial intelligence is a computer science field which tries to create um, intelligent algorithms, intelligent machines. Uh, a machine learning, uh, the machine learning field is a subfield of AI and it tries, tries to learn from the data without directly uh, explicitly programmed, you know. And computer vision is uh, another field where you, the main, the main purpose is to extract information from image or sequence of images, aka videos. Um, it comprehends from simple uh, processing algorithms, image processing algorithms from the to the most sophisticated uh, deep, learnings, deep learning algorithms and architectures. Uh, neural networks, you might know about it. It's inspired, it's slightly inspired in human brain. Um, the basic uh, structure is uh, called neuron, and it basically combines the, the input and applies an, uh, an activation function, usually nonlinear. And, and then you have a, uh, you can combine a lot of different, uh, a lot of um, layers of these neurons to implement a neural network. And deep learn is mainly based on neural networks, um, but it's like uh, extension. Um, nowadays, you have a, a lot of power of computation, and then you have you can go deeper. So you can you can have a lot of layers and different architectures. To, to solve the, the problems. Convolutional neural networks are um, specific uh, architectures of uh, deep learning uh, that work real, uh, really well with images and uh, it automatically extracts important features. So it, it has this, this main concept of convolution, which essentially are filters uh, that extract information of, of um, the data. Uh, here, the images. Um, the, the good thing about it is, is that it learns these filters from the data. So uh, it does the, the job of extracting information, uh, the right information to perform the, the task. LSTM, it's, uh, it's another architecture. It's based on a recurrent, recurrent neural network and it deals well with sequences. It has mechanisms to, to address the, uh, the sequences um, in a short term and a long term. And it works really well for text sequence prediction. And then uh, we use these, these concepts and the techniques of these areas to solve our problem of document reading. Uh, the approach we, we, we have made is uh, using object detection. Uh, the object detection is a computer vision task that you try to, to find some objects, localize some objects in the image, and, and also you can classify those images uh, with a confidence level. And the state-of-art uh, state techniques uh, are using CNN-based models. Um, and the classical OCR is, uh, is an algorithm or a system that tries to recognize uh, the digits, uh, the classic MNIST database, for example, uh, to uh, try to recognize them. And uh, they uh, can be solved with neural network. 
And nowadays, there are a lot of uh, works using LSTM or other hacker neural networks to address the problem of the, the sequence estimation, and it improves the, the performance of the, the, the OCR. So this is my driver license um, to um, illustrate this, this architecture. Uh, there, there are two main components. The first one, you have a detector module uh, where we find the, the, the fields we are interested in. Uh, for example, there uh, we got uh, the name, uh, the personal ID number, the other personal ID number, and uh, the driver's license number. And then you go to uh, content recognition, which uses uh, a model with LSTM and uh, Inception. Then you, got, you get the, the information from, from these images. So we divide the problem. Uh, first, we, we recognize the, the fields and we classify them. So previously, we know the, uh, what are those fields before the content recognition. So we can, we can tweak the content recognition to address better with these, uh, these fields. Actually, what we did, we separated, uh, we divided between numbers and names. Uh, we had more uh, difficulties with, with the names. The problem here is, what, uh, is that we had few images. So our dat data set had only 700 images. So it's not enough for uh, a huge model as uh, the one we were using. Um, it's difficult to get more information, so in the case of the document, they are sensitive information in, and the, usually the client won't be giving you some much of this, this information. And uh, deep neural networks can have a lot of parameters to, to train. Uh, that's a problem, so you have uh, small data and you have a lot of parameters to train. Uh, it, that leads to overfit. So you have some ways to solve this problem or to address this problem. That is more training data. That's not our case. And regularization, it's a usual technique to, to try to, to solve the problem of overfit. And data augmentation, that's what we did. Um, so we had used for the, the first module, the object detection module, uh, some, some usual data transformation. So we applied Gaussian blur, we applied Gaussian noise, brightness transformation, dropout noise, and others. Uh, these techniques were applied to the object detection model, the first one. So uh, data augmentation had improved the performance. This is an, an example of a, a, a car document. And this is just one, one example of transformation. This is a piecewise affine transformation that simulates like the, the, the paper was like folded. And besides that, uh, there is some dropout noise. I don't know if you can see it in the, the presentation. This is another case where we tried to simulate low light situation. So uh, we dropped the, the, the brightness, we reduced the brightness, and also we applied uh, uh, Gaussian noise. So usually when you have low light situation, uh, the, the sensor of the, your camera uh, uh, augments the, increases the, the ISO sensitivity. So it gets more sensible and it gets more noise. So that's a simulation of low light. And for the LSTM, you had another problem that was we have to, to create more sequences. We have to generalize well on sequences. So we had to create more data, create more sequences, different sequences, what was uh, what were synthetic sequences, and create generators for uh, each of those fields, and 
And then we used uh, imaging painting, so we extracted uh, some backgrounds from the original data. And we, we used imaging paint that uh, is a technique that tries to, to reconstruct the, the, the background. So you, you remove information of the image and then you apply imaging painting, they, it tries to reconstruct the background. So you had, we had to remove the, the original name, for example, of one of the CNH, of these driver licenses. And then we apply imaging painting to, to, to recover the background. So you can apply uh, over this background a new sequence, a new generated sequences. Um, and then we, we generated a letter for a letter and, and for each layer, we generated a symbol and an image for uh, to to create the new sequence, and we and then we fake it gen we created fake generators, and the fake generators are input for this uh, this this process of like pasting pasting over the background, which was recovered with imaging painting. So. These are some fake, uh, fake uh, fields. These, these are completely random generated. Actually, we had a, li a list of names, uh, random names, and we then combine these names and, and apply over the background. So that you can, you can, I think you can't, um, you can perceive that there was another name there, and we had like uh, removed that name and put another handle name in it. This is very simple, like it's a prototype yet, so we are working on it yet. So we just deployed on uh, EC2 for, uh, from Amazon, and then we use Docker for environment setup, and, and we use just a simple, simple web framework, Python Flask, I, I think you might know this, just to 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 implement a, a, a really simple endpoint to simulate this to to to, to make a demo for our clients there. I think that's pretty much it. So uh, the object detection model, uh, how did you manage the, when you make the transformation, you distort the original image. So how do you keep the bounding box uh, between the right parts of the image? How, 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 did you have this problem? How, how, how was it? No, actually, I, I don't know if I understood your question, but actually we, we use object detection like to crop the image. So this this is, this image is going to be the input of the the other module. So it uh, we enter just with the image to the next model, and it's it, it tries to 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 extract the information. So we are using a tensor OCR. It's it's available in uh, TensorFlow GitHub as a research pro, uh, a research project, and. It, it gets no localization information. It tries to get the whole image and the, it extracts the, 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 the text in there. I see. Let me reformulate. Okay. Uh, so you created bounding box for detecting uh, regions of interest in documents, right? Uh, when you apply uh, some transformations to start the image. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, yeah, we have to keep track of this. I see. Yeah, yeah. We apply transformation to, we try to, to create a mask for for these these bounding boxes and all the transformations we apply to the image itself we apply to the the oh, mask oh, oh, oh. and then we recover the the bounding boxes i see thank you no problem so hi uh two questions uh, uh, first is how many training, how big got your training set and test set after you synthesized the data for the models and how uh, precise was the model before and after the synthesized data was added? Um, All right, uh, the, the final data set uh, had 
about five five thousand instances of images. Um, five five thousand uh, instances and before the uh, the augmentation we are, we were giving next to 60 70 percent uh, mean average precision that that is the the, the metric we, we used so after that uh, we had next to 95 something like this for the object detection model for the sequence the sequence estimation, we we had a lot of improvement in numbers. We we have next to 60, uh, 95 uh, percent for numbers. For names, we we still have some problems. It's near 75, so we are trying to improve this. Nice talk. Uh, have you use how to how you deploy the model? Uh, do you use uh, Tensor TensorFlow serving on or other project to deploy the model? No, it was really simple because we were just trying to to make a demo. So we use just uh, TensorFlow as is and Flask, and we didn't use uh, a framework for deploying actually. Just use a TensorFlow um, and, and Flask, basically. Hi. Uh, I, why, what's the business purpose to replace the background? Wouldn't be a fraudulent process? Replace the background? Actually, it was just to, to improve the model performance. It, it just, um, we had to do this because we had uh, small data. So we had to, to increase this database so we, uh, so we can overcome the overfit, overfitting problem that was uh, transparent for the client, for example. It was internal uh, need. Hi. Um, one question I have is, uh, have you tried to use pre-trained models on other data sets to see if you could transfer the, the, the weights from other data sets? Yeah, we had tried to do this, so, but we had no improvement. Um, usually the, the pre-trained models uh, are training ImageNet, Coco, so the, the domain is really different to, to uh, documents. So we had we had not improvements using pre-trained model. Hi. Uh, as far as far as I am concerned about the the first part of the model, you extract uh, a mask of bounding box, right? And then you read the sequence of numbers or letters names. But my question is, what is your final output? In a matter of fact, this is structured data. Like I give you a driver li license, and you get me like a CSV of structured data to pass to someone that uh, is not tech savvy to to deal with this raw data or something like that. Yeah, it's like this. We we get the image, we crop the the the, the fields, and we go to the the next model. It extracts the text, and we know the the fields, uh, which are the fields, and we know the text for each one. So we return it as a JSON. Uh, thanks.